worked with children on television, and he also essayed 450 people. Oh, God! Yo, what? Hold on. 400 and what? How's that even possible? <laughs> What's up guys, it is your boy Big Ryan 16 back where another video drop. Hope you guys are having a good day, night, or afternoon when you, whenever you guys are watching this video. And today we're going to be reacting to Creeps Who Worked on TV Shows by Morbid for Fun. He uploaded this about a week ago and we are going to be reacting to it. Ever since the documentary, the Quiet On Side documentary on Nickelodeon, there has been a big discussion on shows that have been having like, you know, creeps who've been, you know, preying on children or been, you know, having sexual assault allegations or, you know, basically anything related to that. So let's see what type of creeps worked on TV shows or whatever Morbid mentioned because I know there's but like a bunch of them but I feel like he's just gonna mention like the big ones people are gonna think of so um yeah let's see how this video is All right, let's see how this is. Most likely grew up with television shows. As a child, you would enjoy these shows for what they were. But afterwards, when you grow up and look back at these old TV shows, you later find out that the people behind the scenes were not the greatest of people. Yeah, Ren and Step. All right, so he's definitely gonna mention Ren, the Ren and Steppy character. Oh, as, as a character, the creator, John um, K. Okay. You can bet that I was crushed when I first found out that the voice of Elmo was in a relationship with a 16-year-old when he was 45 years old. Voice of Elmo on the... Yo, when the fuck was this? Hey, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, I know Elmo had, like, different, like, um, different, um, voice actors. Now I gotta hold you, because, you know, like, Sensitive Street is, like, very, very old. But I did not know this. So is this, like, the OG voice actor, or is it, like, a different, like, voice actor? Uh... In today's video, we talk about monsters who worked on TV shows. Alright. So wait, wait, wait. Before this video starts, I do want to credit and shout out Vincaso since this video is inspired by his series. Also, the one and only Ali will be joining us for today's video. Ooh. Why is this a random collab? Collab? Because this is a 10 page script. Collab video? Alright. ain't reading all that. Follow me on all my <laughs> socials. Watch the video till the At end. the anime thingy. I ain't, I ain't reading all that shit. Oh yeah, Ren and Stimpy. Created by John Chris Falusi that aired from 1991 to 1995. It follows the adventures of Ren, an emotionally unstable Chihuahua, and Stimpy, a good-natured yet dim-witted cat. The show is known for its surreal and often dark humor, exaggerated animation style, and offbeat characters. Ren and Stimpy find themselves in various absurd situations, often resulting in comedic chaos and gross-out humor. This series so basically, it's like yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna try to pause it because this video is like very long. It's like Nickelodeon's version of old, like, Len Looney, Looney Tunes and, like, Tom and Jerry cartoons. Except this was, like, supposed to be, like, for kids, but, like, it had a whole bunch of dark and, like, adult jokes. gained a cult following for its unconventional approach to animation and storytelling, but also faced controversy due to its adult themes and content. Although it had some adult themes, it was aired on Nickelodeon. Weirdly enough, despite the show being a cartoon for kids, there is an adult version of the cartoon called Ren and Stimpy Adult Party. Alright, so he does mention that. I was about to say, is he, is he gonna mention the adult party cartoon? Because that, that was way, like, fucked up than, like, the original. 
Robin Bird and Katie Rice came forward with sexual misconduct allegations against the Ren and Stimpy creator, accusing him of preying on them when they were underage in a lengthy interview with BuzzFeed. Both Robin and Katie shared similar stories. They were both young, aspiring animators who reached out to John to potentially further their careers. They were allegedly met with predatory behavior. Robin claims that in 1994, when she was only 13 years old, she began talking with the creator of Ren and Stimpy via letters. When she was 16, he allegedly flew her to LA and essayed her near his studio. She says for a while she moved in with him, first temporarily, then permanently. When yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, it, the fact that they tried... She, she really thought she was gonna get, like, to work on her, her dream job. But then how to deal with this is like so fucked up, not gonna lie. John over AOL when she was only 14 years old. Yeah. He claimed that he made a lot of sexually inappropriate remarks towards her, and that one time he even choked the chicken while they were on a phone call. When Katie turned 18, John offered her the nigga what? Where John would then essay her. See, I knew about I knew about the allegations. I didn't know about that. Not gonna lie. Uh, why 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 was he choking the chicken? Why was he choking the chicken? were eventually reported to the police, they could neither arrest nor investigate John because the statute of limitations had passed. In response, John's lawyers confirmed that for a brief time, 25 years ago, he had a 16-year-old girlfriend, but denied that John's avid pursuit of Katie was SH, or that he had ever possessed CP. John released an apology to the women and his fans for his behavior, which he said was motivated by undiagnosed bipolar disorder and ADHD, as well as poor impulse control. Robin and Katie criticized John's statements as a non-apology and an attempt to deflect the blame. Due to the allegations, John was not involved yeah. with the Red and Stimpy reveal yeah, I think he, Comedy Central. Yeah, I think he got kicked by season two and from the OG show and then MTV. Justin Roiland. Rick and Morty is a popular Oh, we're about to talk about this one. Okay, we're gonna about to talk about this one. All right, all right. But before, before we get to Rick and Morty, because I know about this one since this is like a more recent one. I'm pretty sure Nickelodeon kicked them from the OG show by season two, I believe. E either season two or season three. And then MTV did allow them, like, did allow them to do the adult party cartoon. However, it got canceled so quickly because it was just way too messed up. This one should be interesting. Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon. It revolves around... Because I don't even think... I don't even think the other person works on the show that much anymore, actually. Son, Morty Smith. Who is kind hearted but often anxious. Together, they embark on interdimensional adventures, navigating through various realities, planets, and dimensions using portals and Rick's spaceship. The show blends elements of domestic family life with the chaotic and sometimes dark there you go. Hmm. exploits of an adventurous grandfather and his reluctant grandson. Now, let's move on to one of the creators. Justin Roiland. Justin wasn't just one of the creators of Rick and Morty because he actually voiced the two main characters of the show, who are of course Rick. Yeah, he was like, "Hey Morty, hey Morty, look at me, I'm a pickle." Charged with felony domestic violence, false imprisonment in Orange County, California. These charges stem from an alleged incident that happened in January of 2020 involving a woman that he was reportedly dating. However, the charges were later dropped due to a lack of evidence. Roiland denied the allegations and was released on bail after pleading not guilty. A pre-trial hearing was set for April 27th, 2023, but the details of the case did not become public until January 2023 when NBC News reported on it. Following the announcement of these charges, several individuals came forward with allegations of abuse against Roiland as a part of the Me Too movement. These allegations included claims of... Yo, do y'all remember the Me Too movement? Like, do y'all remember the Me Too movement? Like, one accusation a lot of, like, people we thought were good got called out. Like, that was, like, such... As a result I got movement on. Not gonna hold you. We probably should get another one of these. Yep. And his roles would be recast for future seasons. Similarly, Squanch Games confirmed Roiland's resignation from the company. Additionally, 20th Television Animation removed him from other projects, including Solar Opposites. Yeah, Solar Opposite. The way they did the voice, the voice change is like very interesting. Like they just completely ignored it and just gave him a new, different voice. To focus on his creative endeavors and restore his reputation. His lawyer also thanked the Orange County District Attorney's Office for their thorough review of the case and the subsequent mm -hmm. dismissal of the charges. Stating that justice had been prevailed. On September 13th, 2023, 
NBC News unveiled further allegations, this time involving sexual assault and inappropriate online interactions with underage girls, some with incidents dating back to 2013. Roiland's legal representative, Andrew Brettler, dismissed the accusations as false and damaging. Dan Harmon, co-creator of Rick and Morty, responded with feelings of disgrace and sadness on September 27th. Yeah, honestly, you really gotta feel bad for the other creator. Clarence like even though paid. oh they're gonna about to talk about clarence oh no not cartoon network focusing on the adventures of clarence and his pals Jack not gonna lie whenever people keep, keep saying oh nickelodeon cartoon Network. wait i'm not saying cartoon network caught up nickelodeon and disney are way messed up and that's um reason why i'm so glad i'm a cartoon network kid i show them this and i also showed them that the creator allowed us also worked on a few shows on cartoon network come like um just because you know cartoon now we didn't have a lot of like live action shows and worked with a lot of live action like you know kids just like nickelodeon and disney they also still have their you know their own like messed up controversies and this is like one of them honestly jeff and sumo skylar page was also the voice of clarence skylar previously a storyboard artist on adventure time and a revisionist on secret mountain for awesome developed a show at cartoon network studios as part of their shorts program in 2012 the pilot aired post 2014 hall of game awards on february 17 2014 14. Clarence officially premiered on April 14, 2014, drawing around 2.3 million views and surpassing competitors in its demographic. The pilot even aired a nomination for a Creative Arts Emmy Award. After four seasons and 130 episodes, the series wrapped up its run on June 24, 2018. In June 2014, Emily Partridge, a storyboard artist who had collaborated with Skylar Page on Adventure Time, posted a series of tweets accusing him of- Yeah, and I gotta hold you. I'm, I'm very popular. I'm very sure these tweets are still up. I'm very positive these these tweets are still up. I'm pretty sure I've seen them before. I, I could show a screenshot, but like when I first saw, I was like, shared on Tumblr that Skyler had bipolar Big oof. and was experiencing a manic episode at that time of his termination. Emily Quinn, a production coordinator on Adventure Time, supported claims of Skyler's illness, but stressed that it did not excuse his actions. Spencer Rothbell, one of Clarence writers, took over voicing Skyler's character for the remainder of the series. On June 21st, 2021, Skyler publicly addressed the allegations for the first time, issuing an apology. In a blog post, he confesses to a power trip from 2012 to 2015 and acknowledged his inappropriate behavior towards women. Skyler concluded his post by pledging to demonstrate utmost respect and dignity if given the chance to collaborate with others again. In December of 2022, Skyler Page got arrested, but not for the reason you would think. Don't, don't arrested because tell me it's so nerf guns from ross the nerf nerf guns hold up wait 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 petty theft on december 13th what the authorities he entered a ross store okay i gotta research after i gotta research after because what he was saying that he didn't have the money to pay for them weird guy Sesame Street. How don't how don't you got the money for it? No introduction since it's like like I, like I, like that ass. How do you not have the money for it? Till this day, Elmo Monster is a red iconic kids TV show who is known for his funny appearance, high pitched voice, and habit of speaking in third person. Elmo hosts the final segment of the show, Elmo's World, which was previously fifteen minutes long before twenty seventeen, but is now five minutes. Taylor. Sadly, sadly, they they cut. It. I don't watch Street, uh, Sesame Street no more, but when I when I saw they cut the time, I'm like, when the fuck did they cut the time? Because it was longer than five minutes. In November 2012, a 23-year-old named Sheldon Stevens claimed that he had engaged in a sexual relationship with Kevin Clash, starting when Stevens was 16 years old. This raised legal concerns, since New York law considers any sexual relationship with individuals under 17, whether consensual or not, a felony. Sesame Workshop, the production company behind Sesame Street, was informed of the allegation in June, found it unsubstantiated after an investigation. Clash admitted to having a relationship with Stevens, but insisted that it was between between two consenting adults. Shortly after Stevens recanted his accusation, another individual named Cecil Singleton accused Clash of sexually abusing him when he was 15 years old. Lawsuits were huh? filed against Clash by Okay, a how many kids? From Sesame Workshop. Like seriously, how many kids? Meaning that personal matters were diverting attention from the show's important work and he needed to address them privately. Sesame Workshop confirmed Clash's resignation, stating that the controversy like, surrounding what, what? his personal life had become a distraction. In July of 2013, the lawsuits against Clash had been dismissed because they were filed more than six years after each man should have reasonably been aware of the alleged
alleged violations. Clash's lawyers hoped that this ruling would help him restore his personal and professional life. The plaintiff's lawyers appealed, arguing that the psychological effects of the abuse were not fully realized until 2012. However, in April of 2014, the U.S. Court of Appeals upheld the decision to dismiss the lawsuits. Stevens later filed a lawsuit against Clash in Pennsylvania, but it was dismissed in June 2014 due to the statute of limitations having passed because of this. Everything that I stated is alleged. Alright, but like, how- Okay, wait, hold up, just- How many kids did he, like, talk to? Like, seriously, how... why was there so many- work on Rolf's Cartoon Club and Rolf's Cartoon Time. He was also involved in the Rolf Harris show, which featured a mix of music, comedy sketches, and cartoon drawings. These shows targeted a younger audience and were among the most well-known programs featuring Harris. However, it's worth noting that Harris had a diverse career and extended beyond children's programming, including music, art, and entertainment. In March 2013, Rolf Harris was among 12 individuals arrested in England under Operation Utree, an investigation into historical allegations of sexual offenses. These allegations were separate from those made against Jimmy Seville, who was another actor that worked with children on television, and he also essayed 450 people. Oh, God! <laughs> How is that even possible? Someone explain to me how in the hell is that even possible? Them were minors, and I will be making a separate video solely about Jimmy Seville. Uh, okay, good, because how in the world does he s that many people? Like, I need to know how is that even possible? However, in August 2013, Harris was arrested again and charged with nine counts of indecent assault dating back to the 1980s, involving two girls aged between 14 and 16, as well as four counts related to the production of indecent child images in 2012. The Crown Prosecution Service found sufficient evidence to pursue charges, citing the public interest and a realistic prospect of conviction. Harris appeared in court in September 2013, where he pleaded not guilty to all charges. Additional charges charges of SA were later brought against him. The trial commenced in May 2014 with allegations including sexual relationships with minors and assaults dating back to the 1960s and 1970s. Despite his denial of the charges, Harris was found guilty on all counts of indecent assault in June 2014. Subsequently, Harris was sentenced to five years and nine months in prison. The judge criticized him for showing no remorse and stated that his reputation had been ruined. Despite okay, at least I think they should have given them more time. I'm not gonna lie, I think they should have given them more time. But at least he did like some type of time. At least he did some type of time. Cause I'm about to say like, because yeah, he did so many sexual assault allegations and y'all only gave him five five years late. Brought up against Harris in February 2016, but he pleaded not guilty. His trial began in January 2017, and he was acquitted of some charges. However, a retrial was ordered for others, which ended with the jury unable to reach verdicts. One conviction from the initial trial was later overturned on the grounds of being unsafe, but the other convictions stood after challenges were dismissed by the Court of Appeal. On May 10th, 2023, Rolf Harris passed away at the age of 93. The Loud House. Please, okay, now we get to Chris Savino. Now we get to Chris Savino. Let me, let me, hold up. Now we get to Chris Savino, but God damn. Like, how do you get away? Like, okay, I know he's not alive no more, and we, he did some time before dying, so I mean, all right, but just, God, Lee, how does he do, does so much, so much sexual allegations, and yet no one, like, this is what I'm talking about when, when, when I'm saying people sometimes just use their power and, like, you know, try to fuck up or fuck over someone else's career because they didn't, they didn't want to sex, they don't want to have sex with them or something like that. TV show originating from all right, but now we get Chris, we have Loud House, which is going to be interesting because of their creator and also the fan base we're like, not gonna hold you. like when, not gonna lie when i say the fan base is just as weird as savino not even gonna lie of royal woods michigan which draws inspiration from savino's own hometown of royal oak the series was initially presented to nickelodeon as a two-minute short film as part of the animated shorts program in 2013 2014, 2013 when they needed more cartoons because just look at like look at like 60 percent of nickelodeon's cartoons in like the 2010s not gonna hold you some of them were kind of like flops 
Since its premiere, The Loud House has consistently garnered impressive ratings, quickly rising to become the highest rated children's animated series on American television. First three, first, first, month of airing. first three seasons kind of hit. SpongeBob 2.0 when it came to its ratings. And, and also, it also kicked off Fairy Odd Parents off of Nickelodeon, which is. Revealing that Chris you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, say that's kind of impressive. Not gonna lie. Following numerous allegations of sexual harassment, these allegations, which had been circulating for about a decade, involved up to a dozen women accusing Savino of various forms of sexual misconduct, including harassment, unwanted advances, and threats of professional repercussions if they rejected him. Nickelodeon took swift action, confirming on October 19th that Savino had been fired. Yeah, not gonna hold you. The fact that they, the fact, the fact that the live, the animation department kicked people faster, way harder than the live action department. Nickelodeon. His actions. Subsequently, you just gotta, you just gotta say it. It's kind of more impressive. Not gonna lie. Like I'm glad. Like I A T S. -E I'm gonna talk more about it later. As part of an agreement reached with the guild, Savino was mandated to donate four thousand dollars to a charity designated by the guild, complete forty hours of mm -hmm. community service, undergo counseling, and acquire certification in sexual harassment training. The allegations against Savino and his subsequent suspension from the animation guild were spotlighted in a March 2019 segment of Full Frontal with Samantha B, titled Hashtag Me Tune. The segment was created and animated by an all-female crew and featured interviews with several female animators who played key roles in the successful campaign for Savino's suspension, as well as one of his alleged victims. Woman power, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, but now, seriously, I gotta, uh, we gotta talk about it. Like, the fact that the, that, uh, the animation department kicked Savino and others way faster than the live action department, this is kind of the reason why I say... Don't blame everyone on Nickelodeon for what Dan Snyder did. Because not everyone on Nickelodeon was bad. It was just, you know, certain people just have more power than others. And I'm like the management. So, like, not going to hold you when I... Not going to hold you when we're going to blame Nick. Don't blame everyone. Like, leave the leave the animation department out of, like, out of it. Like, you know, mainly go for the, the, the people who do the live action shows. Don't go for the people that do the animations. August 13th, 1935, and passing away on March 17, 1999, was a well known British comedian and beloved figure on television during the 1970s and 80s. His performances mm -hmm. frequently featured Emu, a fierce and silent puppet resembling the Australian bird, which accompanied him almost constantly. Cole utilized Emu to wreak havoc in a playful manner while deflecting responsibility for its actions. The clever setup involved a fake arm attached to Hole's jacket, manipulating the puppet to give the impression of independent movement. This gave Emu a personality of its own, characterized by sudden, often violent outburst damn uh, okay hold, hold up nearby hole would half heartedly attempt to control emu during these chaotic moments mm. but often found himself in not gonna lie my first time hearing this but i go as a kid i think i would actually probably pretty much find this entertaining not gonna lie of hole allegedly using the puppets to essay women additionally there were instances of physical assaults by emu such as the infamous incident where it destroyed the queen's oh. bouquet of flowers at the royal variety performance oh one of the most notable episodes occurred in 1976 oh, hey. attacked Michael Parkinson on his talk show, which led to Parkinson falling off his chair. This incident prompted fellow guest Billy Cannoli to issue a threat against Emu. Cole mm. eventually toned down his use of Emu, perhaps mindful of the potential impact on his career. Like... Years, in a 2007 interview with Chorlet, oh, no, what is comedy it? producer Michael Hurl said to Hole, Look, Rod, you've got your hand in that Emu up girl skirts and squeezing their tits. Doing things mm. that would get locked up for like Nigga. Okay, so if he's just using the puppet just to do this, did he did he also do that just to squeeze people's like 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 since he was also like touching everyone like girls and boys like was he also using it to touch another boy's dick or another another girl's vagina? Like I said, he did like I, I generally want to know that now. Like 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 and this is not just me trying to be weird or anything. Like I just like. Like, Peter Euro. Peter Euro okay, is an is American it? singer, songwriter, and social activist. Best known as one third of the folk music group Peter, Paul, and Mary. He was born on May 31st, 1938. 
alongside Noel Paul Stuckey and Mary Travers. The trio rose to fame in the 1960s with their harmonious renditions of popular folk songs and their own original compositions. Their music often carried messages of social justice and activism, contributing to the soundtrack of the civil rights movement and other progressive causes. Beyond his music career, Yoro has remained active in social and political advocacy, using his platform to promote peace, justice, and environmental conservation. Puff the Magic Dragon is a half-hour animated TV special adapted from the famous song of the same title popularized by the folk group Peter, Paul, and Mary, originally broadcasted on October 30th, 1978 on CBS. The special includes Burgess Meredith providing a voice for the titular character. Following its success, two sequels were produced, Puff the Magic Dragon in the Land of the Living Lies in 1979 and- Okay, Puff respectfully, why- Western why is his name Puff the- By what I just told you guys- Like, I understand he's a dragon and he's puffing, but like- But in 1970, Peter why? was convicted and served three months in prison for taking improper liberties with 14-year-old Barbara Winter, who went with her 17-year-old sister to your Rose Hotel Room in Washington, D.C. Uh, of course! Of course he- Barbara stated that when he answered the door, he was naked and that he made her satisfy him. Peter- Nigga, oh my god, okay. Three year long please, please tell me he, he, he wasn't like, like fully naked. Please tell me he was at least wearing something. I was one of them. I got nailed. I was wrong. I'm sorry for it. Your row was granted a presidential pardon by Jimmy Carter on January 19th, 1981, the day before Carter's presidency ended. For decades, Peter avoided any mention of the assault. But by the early 2000s, it became a campaign issue for politicians he supported. In 2004, U.S. Representative Martin Frost of Texas, a Democrat, canceled a fundraising appearance with Euro after his opponent ran a radio advertisement about Peter Euro's offense. In 2013, Republican politicians in New York called on Democratic congressional candidate Martha Robertson to cancel a scheduled fundraiser with Peter. And in 2019, he was uninvited from a folk music festival when the organizers were informed of his conviction. In May of- Alright, so they were kicking him off of stuff. Okay, good. Good. To all the organizers, to everyone who was trying to collab with him, but I have to, like, figure out- Good job to you. Good, good job to you for like saving yourself. Not gonna lie, like just. Because how? Why in the world was he? Headlines for weeks. The same article details other allegations against minors with Peter Euro. Little Bill, Bill Cosby. Oh, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Oh no, he's talking about this one. Oh yeah, and Little Bill. By Barnett P. Honeywood. Cosby had multiple roles in the production, including composing theme music, appearing in live action sequences, and providing the voice of Captain Brainstorm. The titular character, Little Bill, is a fictionalized younger version of Cosby himself, navigating life lessons alongside his family and friends in Philadelphia. Hey, not gonna hold you. I know what Bill Cosby did, but I'm not gonna hold you. Little Bill kind of hit. Like, 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 Little Bill kind of hit. Not gonna lie, everyone. Not gonna lie. Airing on Nickelodeon from November 28th, 1999 to February 6, 2004, with reruns until December 22nd, 2006. It later moved to the Noggin Channel in September 2007. Despite airing reruns until 2014, the show was eventually taken off air for specific allegations. Yeah, after they figure out, after Nickelodeon figure out what Bill Cosby did, video. like. Now, it is important to mention that Little Bill was not the first cartoon that Bill Cosby worked on, because he also worked on Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids cartoon, which aired from 1970. All the way oh, I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know that. In 2014, mm. numerous allegations surfaced against Bill Cosby, accusing him of essaying dozens of women over seven Yeah. Years. Cosby was once celebrated as yeah. a significant downfall due to these accusations. Once I, was, once I heard about this, I, was, I never looked at Little Bill again. Like, I never looked at the show again, like the same again across multiple states in the U.S. and one Canadian province. The allegations gained widespread attention following a stand-up routine by comedian Hannibal Burris, who publicly referenced Cosby's alleged misconduct. Consequently, many more- Oh, dang, he should have played, played the audio. He should have played the- I know it's going to reverse, but not going to- He should have played the- Guys, after this video, if you guys are still watching, go check- Go check out the- Go check out the comedy audio. Because it's like- awards were revoked, and reruns of his television shows were pulled off the air, which included the end of Little Bill reruns. While most- Basically. Incidents occurred outside the statute of limitations for criminal charges, Cosby faced civil lawsuits. In one case, 
case, criminal charges were filed against him, leading to his first trial in 2017, which ended in a mistrial. However, Cosby was found guilty of aggravated indecent assault in a retrial in 2018 and subsequently sentenced to 3 to 10 years in prison. His conviction was later yeah. overturned by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in 2021 due to an agreement with the previous prosecutor. Despite his release from prison, Cosby faced ongoing legal challenges. In 2022, a similar this one, yeah, right. he also California resulted in a ruling in her Yeah, case. after he got released, he just had a he kept dealing with shit like this. And I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked, honestly. I, I'm not like generally so shocked. Thank you for watching till the end of this video. Oh, that's the end. I earned your subscription by the end. And don't forget to follow me on all my other social medias, which are linked in the description below. And big shout out to Ali for joining me in this video. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. Dub collab, dub collab. I'm gonna make sure I subscribe to you, not gonna lie. Read five pages. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. And subscribe if you guys want. And I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys. Later. So guys, that was the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay, not gonna lie, I really enjoyed the video. Honestly, not gonna hold you. Like some of these, I was I, I didn't even know. Like like uh the Kevin Clash one, the Rolf Harris one, and then um, the other guy Rod Hell. Like not gonna hold you when I said I don't I don't even know some of these people. I was thinking he was gonna talk about like the like mostly known ones. But I'm glad that he he, he talked about like certain ones that weren't like as well known because like you know it makes the video a little bit more interesting if you talk about the least known shit. Yeah, the fact that the channels you watch as a kid like you know nickelodeon cartoon network disney channel and, sh and shit honestly maybe pbs kids not gonna hold you they probably have something that i honestly don't know but mm. the fact that they all potentially did something bad well some of them we already know the fact that they did something bad and then it's just like you can't do nothing about it because it's like oh it's hollywood it's just really sad and it's like when they get called out they really deserve to get called out and honestly not gonna hold you uh not gonna hold you if they find if you find out that you know certain people start working there then you know you know call for a change honestly like the current ceo for nickelodeon is ryan robinson and he worked with dan snyder on a few shows so not gonna hold you want to say that but I come should change certain people who still work at Nickelodeon. But yeah, guys, uh, comment morbid banger, comment morbid for fun banger. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the bell and let's get notified when I upload a new video. Comment what do you guys want me to react to next. So, anyways, that was the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hope